Hello and welcome back. We did our little program with the stairway lightning. Yeah. This was this is the program. Yeah. Download it. This is how it worked. Press the button. It's on for a number of seconds. Adjustable. And turning off automatically again. What do I need to adjust this? Yeah. I just need to change this value here. Okay. Good. So I want to have it 20 seconds. Yeah. Download. If the download has finished, yeah, I will even open, open the serial monitor. If the download has finished, I press the button. Okay. Now it takes 20 seconds. So this is working. Yeah. But now think of something. Yeah. We're using the stairway, usually it's no issue. And then for whatever reason, uh, every time uh, I'm, I'm sleeping or I have to talk to somebody, I have to scratch or whatever, it does not really matter. Always the light turns off. So I just say, hey, come on. I just want to readjust the, the light just a little bit longer yeah. because it's too annoying for me. It's not that comfortable. So what do I have to do? I really have to open my program, change this here to 30 seconds yeah, or whatever I like. I have to download the program. After download of the program, it's working fine. Yeah. I'm pressing. Should work. Good. But is this really a practical way? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have somehow an adjustment? Some adjustment simply. Okay. From the outside world. So not to, to change the code, just to change the time. It's really not a practical way. So I want to, to introduce to introduce uh, a learning mode in my in my program okay i want to introduce a learning mode therefore i have to store somehow if the learning mode is is uh, entered or not okay i'm using a static variable of course because i need to remember if this learning mode was was reached or not uh, and I'm using a so-called bool variable. A bool variable does hold a certain a certain uh, truth. Yeah? So it's true or false, two states. So and I will call it learn mode. So if I'm in learn mode, learn mode. If I'm in learn mode, I do something else. The initial value is false, of course. If it powers up, should not be should not be in learn mode. Okay. This thing here, I have to I have to divide. Yeah. So if the button is pressed, I want to do it different. I want to do it different. So I simply divide this if not old button state. and we remove this here okay so if the button is pressed and it was not it was not pressed before yeah, what should happen if we are in learn mode something should happen we don't know yet but if you're not in learn mode exactly At least we will remember when the last button was pressed. Okay. If you're not in learn mode, we just remember when the last button was pressed. Okay. Now
how do I enter the learn mode? Okay. So the button is pressed and now we are else. It was already pressed before. Okay. It was already pressed before. So if we are not in learn mode, if we are not in learn mode, the button is pressed, it was not it was already pressed before, and we are not in learn mode. Yeah. We have saved this millis button pressed here, and we will compare with the current time, this millis button pressed time. And if it's smaller, time out, learn mode. Learn mode. Then, then we enter the learn mode. Oops, one bracket too much. I will have to define it over there. Define, define, and let's say it's one second. So, what does this mean now? Learn mode. True. What does this mean now? So I press the button. We are not in learn mode. I save when the button was pressed. Then is whatever happens next. Then we come again. The button is pressed, but it's still pressed, so we are here. So if we are not in learn mode, and this is not too long ago, Nothing happens. But if I hold the button for more than this value, which is now 1000, so 1000 milliseconds, one second, then I enter the learn mode. Okay. So, then I'm in learn mode. So I need to hold the button for one second or more. Then I'm entering learn mode. What needs to be done next? This here is a little bit complicated, yeah, because I could simply write Ah, there is a wrong, this is wrong, bigger than learn mode, of course, yeah, and I could simply write it like this Okay looks looks good because this is some some bool return value compare if it's bigger and this is learn mode if it's if learn mode is false it will every time check if learn mode gets true it will not come here anymore so we entered now learn mode okay uh, That's it about the button handling. This here we have to think about. Yeah. So, now, if we are in learn mode, now we need some, some variable where we store how much seconds, milliseconds, we want to have it on. Yeah. So I will use another static unsigned unsigned long and I will call it wait time. Okay. And this initial value I will simply use this one. 30 seconds uh, in this case or I will reduce it again for testing purposes later. Wait time is now 30 seconds. If we are in learn mode, yeah, I will simply set the wait time, the wait time equals the current time minus the last time the millis button was pressed. Okay, that's the wait time. I calculated new. Okay. 
If we are not in learn mode, it should basically act as before. So I am comparing those things. And now, now we get into trouble. Yeah, we get into, I mean, I, I said, please use a structured coding and use copy and paste. And now use copy and paste and the structure is gone. Yeah, you will notice this very soon. Of course, I could enter here space, 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 but pff, it takes some time. Yeah. So there is a tool. Uh, where is this? Auto format. Yeah. If you press this auto format, haha, ta ta, it's working good. Okay, that's just just side side information. Here we're still waiting for light time, but this time we need to wait until wait time. Ooh, this is not perfect. Now it's better. Yeah. So we wait until wait time. Good. Yeah. So we can enter learn mode. The learn mode will change the wait time, and we cannot ex exit learn mode. So we will exit learn mode if we make a new button press. Yeah, then we exit learn mode. So we are here. Yeah. If we are in learn mode and the button press is new, we say learn mode okay, false. Yeah. And we will do some new. I will write new wait time. We use the wait time milliseconds. Okay, so if we are in learn mode, press the button, it will stop the learn mode and print out the new wait time. Good. Yeah. Let's download. Ah, it's compiling. That's good. Let's press the button. And oh, after five seconds. It turns off. Let's press the button longer. Is it already one second? I don't know. Huh. Okay, it is not turning off. So I assume we entered learn mode. I press the button. Aha, uh -huh. new wait time, 17 seconds. I make it smaller for you. So we have We've got a printout, you wait then 17 seconds. Yeah. So if I now press the button, ooh, new wait time, 31 seconds. Yay, 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 yay. Press the button, new wait time, 38 seconds. Aha, uh -huh. so there is something still wrong. So we need some, 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 some debug output. What is going on? Okay. So, First of all, what I really missed is some feedback if we entered learn mode or not. Yeah. So, how to do this? I write here if learn mode. I will simply let the LED blink. Yeah. So, I will write digital right hi delay 100 milliseconds here the delay is pretty useful yeah? because I want to make I want to make it blink
blink two times. Then I know I have entered learn mode now. Okay, see if this is working. Dum -dum -dum. Okay. Press the button. Should be five seconds again, of course. Turning off, turning off, perfect. Press the button longer. After one second, ah, now it flashed. I entered learn mode. Okay, now I'm sure I entered learn mode. Good, 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 good. Press the button. Ah, it's flashing again. Ah, there I see already the issue. There I see already the issue. Of course, we turn off here learn mode. Yeah. And here the millis button pressed is still the old value. Mm -hmm. So I will also write it there. And here I end up in a situation you will see this for sure in your code. Okay. Millis button pressed is in if in this if branch and in this if branch, so I can simply write it here, back back, and delete it here. Because if I'm doing it in any case, I write it outside, then my code is shorter. Upload. Let's see if it's working now better. Press the button. Should be five seconds again. Press and hold the button. Aha! Uh -huh. Indication. I entered learn mode. Aha! Uh -huh. What's now? New wait time. One second. Yeah, it's one second. Did I do something wrong or was it again the, the, the bouncing of the button? I tried again. Press and hold the button. Tuk -tuk. Learn mode. Okay, it seems like it was the bouncing of the button. Because now, now I can select simply at some point in time I press the button. Pok. New wait time, 15.6 seconds. Okay, so after 15.6 seconds, this should be turned off. Let's hope. Yeah, or if we still have some error in our code. Ah, it turned off. Now I press a button. How long is it waiting? I don't know. It was. It, it looks longer than uh, five seconds. Mm -hmm. Here would maybe a debug output also not be the worst ID, let's say. So we'll simply write here uh, button pressed and then now I do an add sign, add milliseconds, waiting for wait time, milliseconds. So a little bit more information outside that we see. Uh, that we see how long I will also I will also write it out here. That's a good idea. I will simply write it out here. That's the be the best idea. Yeah. Button pressed at milliseconds. Then new wait time. This should look nice, hopefully. So I'm writing button pressed at milliseconds, at whatever milliseconds in every case. If I'm in learn mode, I write new wait time. If I'm not in learn mode, I write wait, waiting for blah, blah, blah. Okay, download. In it done, press the button. Okay, button pressed at five 
0.074 milliseconds, waiting for 5000 milliseconds. Looks good, turned off. Yeah. Press the button, beeping. Learn mode entered. Yeah. Maybe it would be also nice to have an output on the on the uh, serial monitor as well. I will simply press the button now. New wait time, 16 seconds. Waiting for 16 seconds. Ping! Perfect. Perfect. Working. Okay. So, this is how you can do, how you can adjust, adjust the value. Now this thing is running. Now this thing is up and running. You can adjust the value every time you like. And if you press the button, it will wait the adjusted value. So now it's around 16 seconds. Yeah. And now I'm getting annoyed because these 16 seconds are, for instance, too short for me. Yeah. So I just simply add learn mode. Bing, bing. And now I do whatever I do. Aha, uh -huh. this bouncing button, I don't like it. Yeah. I will simply enter learn mode. Bang, bang. Now I just have whatever I need to do. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. And then what I feel like now I should have reached a time where the light should be turned off. I simply press the button again. Pick. And this is stored. And now, as you can see on the serial monitor, it will be light for 22 seconds. Next time. Okay. It's working. I adjust now my, my lighting time. However, like I, I, I mean, I'm sure there are guys outside, outside there who will adjust every microsecond and see if this is working because we have to find a, a, a somehow uh, we want to save energy and we want to have it convenient in lighting and so we have to adjust it uh, perfectly. Yeah, and it takes ages to adjust the light on the stairways, uh, even if it's a little bit. Uh, you know, overkill, but uh, I'm for sure there are guys or people outside who do this. And then something happens, yeah. So we will turn off the power supply, yeah? turn it back on, yeah? we have to reopen the the serial monitor also again. Yeah. Everything was adjusted perfect. Yeah. Years of effort spent into the right, uh, into the correct timing of your stairway light. Now it was a power outage. Press the button. Five seconds. All the adjustments are gone. Ah, what a pity. That's the disadvantage, the big disadvantage, if you're, if you're uh, using, if you're using it with an EEPROM, uh, with, with, with a variable, yeah, I already said the correct word. <laughs> Next thing, our Arduino here, this little thing is also adjusted with, uh, is also adjusted with an EEPROM. What is an EEPROM? There's a separate video about this. Yeah. So the the variables and so on they are adjusted or they are located. They are done in in in, in RAM, yeah, random access memory. If I unplug, if I unplug the power supply, RAM will have forgotten everything it ever hold. Yeah? RAM is very fast, but not stable if it's turned off. Yeah? What we need is something which is stable, which is turned off. When it's turned off, 
that's like an, an flash memory drive and there is some memory kind some memory of this kind inside here we can use how do we use it this will be explained in in another video of mine okay so in the next video right now this was the video about adjustments and next video we'll do the adjustments permanent thanks for your attention